God's blueprint for your life can be found on the pages of Scripture. The basis of all truth is God's holy word. We invite you to join the Beulah Baptist Church in Bennett, North Carolina for Truth For Today with Dr. Neil Jackson. Dr. Jackson's verse-by-verse preaching will encourage you in your journey of life and answer your greatest questions. So open your Bible and your heart to hear Truth For Today. James, a faith that works, is Dr. Jackson's five-part sermon series on the works of faith in the life of the believer from the Epistle of James. This series will bring to life some of the key elements that God requires in the life of each of His children. For your gift of $50 or more, we will send you this series, and you'll be assisting us as we tell the world of Jesus and His sacrifice for us. So when you write or call, make sure you request the series, James, a faith that works with your gift of $50 or more. In our Christian lives, we get hard, we get complacent, we get carnal, we get irritable, we get cantankerous. And we need to be made over. We need to be fixed up. We need to be, in a sense, retreaded. You say, well... How do you do that spiritually? It's called revival. We need to be revived. You can't be revived until you've been vived. So you get saved. You get the Holy Spirit living in your life. But we just get old and complacent and hard. And we need to be stirred up. We need to be fixed up. We need to be... Revive spiritually. You say, preacher, how do we do it? That's what I want to talk to you this morning about. Five steps in the path to revival. Sermon's entitled, A Spiritual Makeover. A Spiritual Makeover. If you're going to make over a house, if you're going to fix up your car, if you're going to have a makeover physically to your body, they have steps that they go through. Same is true with you being revived spiritually. You say, what are those steps? Number one, you cannot be revived spiritually without first and foremost submission. You must submit to God. James chapter 4 verse 7 says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Submit was a military term. It means to rank under. It's one who falls into rank Under the authority of another. God is the general. We are the privates. We are to submit to his orders. We are to submit to his plans. Submit. It's a voluntary subordination to God. And what he says is right. Now it's not. Remember when you were a kid. And you would play mercy with somebody. And they 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 would bend your fingers back. Until you said oh. You would submit. That's not the way God is. It's a voluntary submission. It's you saying, God, I realize your way is the right way. I realize your way is the only way. So I'm not going to to rebel against you. I'm going to voluntarily submit to you. Submit to your plan. Christians, the Bible tells us, are to submit to government. Romans 13. We are to submit to the elders of the church. 1 Peter chapter 5. Husbands and wives, Ephesians wives, are to have mutual submission to each other. Wives are to submit to their own husbands. 1 Peter chapter 3. Slaves are to submit to their masters. And all of us Christians, James chapter 4 tells us, we're to submit to God. Now, we know God is the the creator of the world. We know God is the sustainer of the world. We would all readily confess God is in charge. The buck stops with God. 
But yet a lot of us don't submit. A lot of us fight against God. We know what His Word says. We know what is right. We know what He says is wrong. We know that we shouldn't be fussing and fighting. We know that we shouldn't be watching filth on television. We know that we shouldn't be cynical and critical. We know that we shouldn't be doing some things and we should be doing some other things. We know it. We just won't submit. Now, if you look at verse 6, it says God is opposed to the proud. Now, what would cause us not to submit to God? We're proud. I know better, God, than what you know, and I'm going to do it my way. All right, that's fine. You have that opinion, and you can do that. But this verse tells us God is your enemy. God is going to work against you. God is going to to oppose everything you do. You say, why would anybody resist God and not submit to God? Romans chapter 8 verse 7 says this. Because the carnal mind is enmity. It's the enemy against God. For it's not subject or it's not submissive to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So before we were saved, we were his enemy. But a lot of times we're in this earth suit, this flesh suit. And we just don't want to submit. We don't want to do it God's way. Our family was, was out of town this week. I was home all alone, and I was down about 35 minutes away visiting somebody on Tuesday. So I go into the restaurant, and I order all by myself. You order, and you go, you get your food, and you go sit down. I'm in there all by myself, and I put in the order. I pay the lady for my meal, and then she says, Can I have your name so that we can call you when your food's ready? Well, with all of this NAS, NSA stuff going on, I consider that's an invasion of my privacy. Why don't you just give me a number like every other restaurant does and just say, number 447, your food is ready. But she wanted my name. And, and she was a young girl and she wasn't being... Uh, I just didn't want to give her my name. So I said, my name is... Um, Pinocchio Papadopoulos. I really did. 35 minutes away, they didn't know me. Pinocchio Papadopoulos. Came to me just out of the blue. The Holy Spirit must have gave it to him. No, probably not. Pinocchio Papadopoulos. She started typing in, and she wasn't sure how to spell it. And I said, you can call me Petey for short. She said, Petey. I said, or Bob works. That, that, that'd be fine. So they came and they called my name. Bob, your food's ready. You say, why did you do that? I don't like the way they were doing it. Why did you do that? Was there anything wrong with them asking your name to call for your food? No, nope, nothing wrong with it. Well, was it really an invasion of your privacy? Maybe a hair. So why would you give them your name? Listen, I wouldn't submit. I didn't want to do it their way. Nothing wrong, nothing unethical, nothing illegal, nothing immoral. I just didn't like the way they were doing it. So at this restaurant, I was Pinocchio Papadopoulos. If we're honest... A lot of us are the same way. Something happens in our life that's not morally wrong. That's not illegal. That's not immoral. That's not unethical. We just don't like it. Ah, oh, I'm not going to submit. No, 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 no. I'm going to pitch a fan in. I'm going to lie. I'm gonna, no, I'm just going to be obnoxious because I don't like it. Listen. This verse says, 
If you want God to work in your behalf. Instead of being opposed on your behalf. You got to submit. God, whatever you say. Even when I don't like it. Even if it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. I want to submit. First word. Submission. Second word. Resistance. Look on the verse. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist is another military term. It means to take a stand. Satan cannot lead you into sin without the consent of your will. He is a defeated foe who has no power whatsoever over the Christian. Literally, Satan is like the little puppy dog that comes to you wagging his tail, begging for food. And he will eventually go away if you do not feed him. You have to resist him. If the devil would take on Jesus Christ, do you really think he won't take on you? He will. You say, okay, okay, okay. When is the devil going to to attack me? Here's when he's going to attack you. When you submit. When you say, okay, God, I'm going to do it your way. God, I'm going to to abide by by your laws, by your word. I'm going to do it your way. Then expect that Satan is going to be on the prowl. And he's going to attack you. Look at what he did with Jesus. Jesus was tempted by the devil After his baptism. When the dove descended. Then came the devil. When Jesus was baptized. Then he faced battle. So I want you to understand. The road to revival is this. You submit to God. God, whatever you say. If I don't like it. I'm still going to do it. If it pushes my buttons, I'm still going to do it. You submit, therefore, to God. And then you have to resist the devil. The devil is not irresistible. Jesus did it. How did Jesus resist the devil? Every time you see Satan attacking Jesus, he quoted scripture. So don't tell me that you can't can't defeat the devil. You can Quote scripture. He comes and gives you a bad thought. He comes and gives you an angry thought. He comes and gives you a discouraging thought. He comes and tries to overwhelm you and get you to do something that's not right. Quote scripture at him. Secondly, you have to resist the devil. Number three. The word is closeness. Closeness. Look at verse eight. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh was used of the Old Testament priest who approached God with sacrifices. God, we want to get close to you. God, we bring in this sacrifice on behalf of the sins of the people, on behalf of our sins, and we want to get close. Now, here's the interesting thing about God. God's not going to jerk you out of bed in the morning. All right! Get close to me. God's not going to make your computer not come on until until you've had your quiet time. It's your choice. Submit to him. Resist the devil. And you have to draw close to him. But do you see this promise? If you will get close to God. If you will take a step toward God. God will take a step toward you. If you say, God, I want to be your friend. God will respond. Hey, I want to be your friend as well. Let's hang out together. Here, I'm going to take a survey. And it's going to, it's going to, it's going to embarrass some of you ladies. All right, here's the survey. How many of you ladies, honest before God, God is your witness, were ever asked out by somebody and you, and you turned them down? How many of you ladies were ever asked out by somebody on a date during your dating years and you told them no. Come on, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on. 
Some of you, all right, listen to this. God never turns you down. You never say, God, I want to spend time with you. No, I'm too busy. No, you're not my type. No, no, no. I, 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 I got other, other plans. Anytime you want to get close to God, this verse says, He wants to get close to you as well. Friend, you can be close to the God of the universe. The creator, the sustainer, the one who is sovereign. But you never will be unless you read your Bible. You never will be unless you pray. You're not going to get close to God if if church is just kind of a a happenstance. and Just, oh, I'll do it when I can. You won't get close to God. You can have a total spiritual makeover if you will submit and stop doing it your way. If you will start resisting the devil. And if you will say, God, I want to be close to you. So therefore, I'll get up early and I'll read my Bible. God, I want to be close to you. So therefore, I'm going, I'm going to have some prayer time. God, I want to be close to you. So I'm going to do something I never do. I'm going to go to Sunday school. Fourth word. It's cleansing. Look at the last part of verse 8. Draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. Then it says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. You double-minded. Cleanse means to wash. Used to describe the ceremonial cleansing of priests. Before they could offer sacrifices, they had to wash. They had to cleanse themselves. If you are going to be close to God, you got to deal with the sin in your life. And honestly, the sin that does so easily beset us, it, it, it separates us from God. And a lot of times we put on our good Christian outfits and we come to church and everything's great. But there's no fellowship with God. There's no communion with God because we're eaten up with sin. Mental sin. Physical sin. Some some Christians are just mean. Some some Christians are just, just rude. Some Christians are uneducated. Ethical. Some Christians are cheaters. Some Christians are liars. Some Christians are dishonest. Some Christians. You wonder if they're a Christian by the way they act. And this verse says if you want to be close to God, you got to cleanse your hands and you got to purify your heart. You know, well, I don't have any gross major sin. 1 John chapter 1, verse 6 says, If we say that we have fellowship with Him and we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not the truth. What's your sin? What is the sin in your life that cuts off your relationship with God? Look at the verse again. It says, Cleanse your hands, you sinners. That's talking about external behavior. Look at the next phrase. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's talking about internal attitudes. We say, oh, smoking and drinking and drugging and carousing. That's wrong. That's wicked. It is. And these attitudes that we harbor... They're wicked as well. This cynicism, this criticalness, this backbiting, this, 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 nothing is ever good enough for you. That's wicked as well. He says, if you want to be revived spiritually, stop looking at everybody else and you deal with your internal heart attitude. Proverbs 24 verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Says it again. He that hath clean hands, external behavior, and a pure heart, internal attitude. 
who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. You see an old house, and you say, somebody needs to do something with that house. That house is just falling apart. You see an old car, man, somebody needs to restore that thing. How's a preacher to respond when he sees a worn out Christian not living as God intended? I'm here to say, he's to say, you need a revival. You need a spiritual makeover. You need to submit yourself to God. You need to resist Satan. You need to get back into your Bible and prayer and get close to God. And you need to get all of the sinful stuff out of your life. Final word. Humility. Look at verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. The picture is of someone laying prostrate before an eastern monarch. And the monarch would come and he would pick up your face and he would grab your hand and he would pick you up. That's what he's saying. If you want to be revived spiritually, submit to God resist the devil, fight the devil, do everything you can to stop the devil attacking you. Get close to God. Get all of the junk out of your life externally and internally. And then humble yourself. Lower yourself. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, he put it like this. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. If you want to have personal revival. You can. But you got to humble yourself. A lot of us. Starting with Neil Jackson. I like my way. Don't do it in a way that I don't like. Oh, I don't like it. You need to humble yourself. We would never shake our fist in God's face. But we do with our actions and our attitudes every day. God, I don't care what you said in your word. I'm going against it. You need to humble yourself. God, I don't care what you said I was supposed to do and how you said I was to act. I'm going against it. God... I don't care the way you said I should treat people. I'm going against it. The Bible says he resists you. The Bible says he's your opponent. The Bible says God, the creator of the universe, he stands in the way of prideful people. That's us. We reek with pride. Our, our, our wife does something differently than we think. And we chew her out. Our kids do something that's not wrong. It's just different. And we give them a tongue lashing. The key to developing biblical humility is this. Look at the verse. Humble yourselves in the sight of of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2. When the angel saw God, they cover their faces. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. When he saw the Lord, he fell on his face and says, Woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. You say, how can I humble myself? Get your stinking opinion off of your way. Put it on God's way. Get your focus off of somebody that's doing it different. And put it on God. You realize when Job saw the Lord. Job chapter 42 verse 6. Wherefore I abhor myself. And I repent in dust and ashes. 
when you value yourself, when you promote yourself, when you exalt yourself in your way, you're prideful. John is on the Isle of Patmos when he sees the resurrected Lord in Revelation chapter 1 verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. You know what the problem of Eula Baptist Church is? Our biggest problem. Our number one problem. We have a prideful preacher. We got prideful deacons. Prideful Sunday school teachers. Prideful church members. You know what revolutionized this church? You know what would transform this church? You know what would make this church the news of this whole community? If we would humble ourselves in the sight of God. God, we're seeking you. God, we're seeking your way, even if it might be a little bit different than our way. God, we don't have the answers you do, and therefore, we're falling on our face. And we're humbling ourselves. You say, preacher, how do I know if I'm humble? I'll give you one test. How do I know if I'm humble? There's a lot of tests. I'll give you one. Look at the next verse. Speak not evil one another, brethren. When you're humble, you're not criticizing people. When you're humble, you're not talking about people. When you're humble and not full of yourself. You're not, you see that word, brethren? You're not tearing down other Christians. But you don't know what they did. You don't know what, how they treated me. Humble yourself. Then it says, speak not evil one another, brethren. If you're tearing people down, it's just a sign that God is not controlling your heart. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Truth For Today. Our prayer is that God's Word has ministered to your deepest need and answered many of your questions about life. Truth For Today is only able to broadcast on this station through the regular prayers and financial support of God's people. Would you consider becoming a monthly partner of Truth For Today? You may mail your gifts to Truth For Today, Post Office Box 104, Bennett, North Carolina, 27208. If you would like to receive a copy of today's message, please request this sermon with your donation of any amount. If you would like to donate by credit card, you may call 336-581-3170. Be assured that God's Word has the answer for your every need. And join us next time for Truth For Today.